Hello friends and welcome back to another VGC 2020 Battle Series episode. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode we're going to be playing some casual battles uh, on the double ladder. Uh, because the official rules don't start till the 1st of July, I wanted to get some content out for you um, as early as possible with some Series 5 teams. That That is the new rule set. We've got access to all these brand new Pokemon in the Isle of Armour. They will be eligible to use on the ladder, the official rank ladder starting on the 1st of July. So from that date, you can go in, update your rules, and then you'll be able to use all these new Pokemon. The Pokemon team that we're gonna be featuring today is gonna to be based around Expanding Force, a brand new move tutor move that we've had uh, in the Isle of Armor as well, which is ridiculous. And the team's based all around Trick Room. We've got the Hatterene, the Ndidi, the Alolan Marowak, Amoongus, Gigalith, and Porygon 2. So a lot of my favorite Pokemon in this team, uh, I really do enjoy it so hopefully we'll have some good good battles today uh, and as always there will be a rental team of this this particular build at the end of the episode so do stick around for that if you want to try it out and give it a go for yourself so without further ado we'll hop on hopefully it doesn't take too long to find an opponent just keep in mind that uh, because this is casual battles we can face absolutely anything and there is no rank on obviously the casual ladder so uh, it's not like we can find better opponents the higher we climb but i'm very excited about series 5 starting i love all of the introduction of these new pokemon we've got like Politoed, kingdra the alola marowak porygon 2 we've got some big pokemon coming into the format now so the competitive scene is going to change dramatically from what we've known as in series 4 um, and we've got our first opponent already so we've got joy playing a um, dragapult trachean uh, primarina whimsicott incineroar and colossal so it does look like we've got kind of um a combination of beat up uh in here with the whimsicott and terrakian and new, a new pokemon that we got access to as well and then you've got the g max colossal is going to be the kind of the centerpiece of this team you'd imagine with the probably surfing Dragapult there and also the Aqua Jetting Primarina. But Trick Room does really well against this team. So I think Trick Room is definitely where we're going to go with this. Um, just dealing with the Colossal becomes a little bit more difficult. We kind of maybe have to rely on our Marowak to deal with the majority of things um, here. Well, I mean, you could go Gigalith. You could go Gigalith, but. Um, hmm. Gigs isn't too bad. We do need to set a trick room up for sure. Uh, I think Indeedy helps us out a bunch with that. We will lose Indeedy though, of course, um, especially if we see the Dragapult uh, Colossal lead from my opponent. But it, it does mean that we get our trick room set up. Uh, so I think I'll go Hat Indeedy. Um, I think we want Marowak. And do we want Amoongus or Gigalith here? P2 even. Nah, let's go Amoongus, because then we can just put stuff to sleep. And I think we've got enough firepower between Marowak and Hat to uh, to get around my opponent. We've got to be a little bit careful, of course, with the um, the residual damage that we're going to take every turn from the, the G-Max Volklith that we'll see from the um, from the uh, the Coloss G-Max Colossal. But you never know, it might not come, and my opponent might go down another route, but I doubt it. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to see Incineroar and we're going to see Dragapult come up for my opponent. Now, this isn't the worst thing in the world because we can uh, get around that Incineroar with our Follow Me redirection on Indeedee. We get the Psychic Train up on the field. There's the Intimidate from the Incineroar. Um, and whether or not my opponent is keeping that Colossal for the late game is another thing. Uh, so, we'll just go Follow Me. And we will just try and set our Trick Room up. If we lose Ndidi here, that's fine because we get uh, Marowak in, uh, which is ideally what we want to be doing as soon as possible. Uh, making use of that Pokemon. Uh, there's a Shadow Ball. Okay, so um, not going to affect us, but Doc is Lariat coming out. So he's going to be able to do some some nice damage here to the Ndidi. Take us down to our Sash. Um, and we get the Trick Room set up. So... We don't want to max just yet. I think we want to kind of hold off going for our max and uh, we'll just try and sack Ndidi here. Uh, go for uh, follow me and well, there's no point if we We could go expanding force. It would do some nice damage to the Dragapult, but we're not going to be doing any damage to the Incineroar and we can get decent damage off with the Dazzling Gleam right now. So that's probably the better idea to do. Whether or not the Dragapult goes for another 
Shadow Ball is another thing. I don't know. It might be Scott, so it might actually be locked into that, which would be super unfortunate for my opponent. Although, if they do go for it this time, they're probably going to get uh, Shadow Ball into hat. So, we'll get the Dazzling Gleam off. And we do see a Roselli Berry on the, the Dragapult, which is interesting. Um, but we still do an absolute chunk of damage there. So, and a nice chunk to that Incineroar. The Darkest Lariat coming out it will be into Indeedee. And then the Dragapult going to be able to launch, I guess it might be uh, Shadow Ball now into Hat. But it might be put off going for that. Nah, it is going to go for that. Um, this will this this will hurt for sure. Wow, it actually takes us down. We lose our lead. Critical hit. That's not ideal. That is not ideal. Okay, well everything down to Marowak now and Amoongus. So we've got to make use of these turns as best we can. The psychic train is up, so we can put things to sleep. Um. Ooh, this is going to be rough. This is going to be really rough. I think we might need to max Marowak, although I, I really don't want to have to. We'll put the Dragapult to sleep and we'll go for a Bon Meringue into Incineroar. If you can get rid of the Incineroar now, that will help us out a bunch. Um, we do get the Dragapult, put that to sleep with our Amoongus. And hopefully Bon Meringue hits. Which it does. And it doesn't proc a berry, which is exact, uh, which is really lucky because if we proc a berry there, I don't think we get the Incineroar, and it probably takes Marowak down with the Darkest Lariat. So uh, it's really unfortunate that we lost the Hatterene in the way that we did. Dragapult stays asleep for a turn. We need to keep in mind that we that is something that will really, really threaten our Marowak. Uh, Colossal going to come in now, so. Um, we're pretty free to double into this slot, and I think that's what exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it to sleep, I'm going to max, and I'm going to go for that max quick into the Colossal. If we can get rid of this, I think the game gets a little bit easier, um, in all honesty. Um, it's just, if it protects here, it's going to be difficult, for sure. They are maxing their Colossal, and it looks like it's min speed Colossal as well, because it's going before our Marowak, which would indicate that it is the uh, the slowest thing on the field. It is min speed as well. It may be a speed tie between our Amoongus and it, um, but hopefully it's not, and even if it is, hopefully we get um, we get the, the, the speed, we win the speed time, we get the spore into it, because that's that's what we need right now. So we do max it on Marowak. First time I'm maxing Alola Marowak, but uh, obviously with the Thick Club, um, I wonder if it does carry over actually, with the damage. We do win the speed tie, we put the Colossal to sleep, so that makes things a heck of a lot easier. We'll get this max quick into the Colossal, which should pick up the knockout in all honesty, and it gives us that special defense boost as well, which will make taking those Shadow Balls from that Dragapult a little bit easier, um, especially if it does wake up this turn, which I'm hoping that it doesn't. So there's a special defense boost, and see, Dragapult, what are you doing? We do proc a weakness policy though, so there's the Colossal getting that stat boost. Uh, Dragapult stays asleep, so that's ideal. Um, and we can just go for I think a Rage Powder now, and we'll go for another Max Quake into the Colossal. Um, hopefully the Colossal stays asleep. I'm not too concerned at the moment about the Dragapult, but we need that Colossal to stay asleep. It has got its uh, weakness policy. If it does wake up, it's likely going to take down our Amoongus. Um, but Amoongus is pretty bulky, so we might be able to, uh, to survive that hit regardless. Just about preserving Marowak at this point, and we've got to deal with this Dragapult sooner or later. So Dragapult stays asleep, probably trying to go for a Protect here. Colossal stays asleep, so we get the sleep turns that we need right now, and that is ideal. So, uh, I'm going to be able to get rid of and make quick work of the Colossal. This is one of the beauties about um, Amoongus in this format as well. You know, having that really good defensive Spore user, you can set your Trick Room up and just sit it next to whatever offensive threat you've got and put things to sleep just to totally mitigate the fact that your opponent is going to go for a, a Dynamax or whatever this turn. Dimensions do turn back to normal. Not the end of the world. We've got two special defense boosts, so if it is the Primarina that comes in, we should be able to take and handle it a little bit better than what we were. And we've still got Rage Powder as well, which we can make use of. It is actually Terrakian. Okay, so that's not a... It's not ideal. It's not ideal at all. 
I think what we'll do is we'll go for a... Uh, if we rage... I mean, yeah, we'll rage powder. And we'll go for the max phantasm into the dragapult and get rid of that. That's a better idea, I think. Because we'll probably see rock slide come out from the Terrakian. Um, and the Dragapult, I feel, is going to wake up now because its sleep turns are over. So we'll see Shadow Ball. Oh no, it's going for the beat up. Okay, so it's trying to catch us out. So good job we went for that um, Rage Powder. Trying to go for the beat up there. Going for the Rock Slide does a chunk of damage. That would have, if we got the plus two there, it would have been, uh, it would have been terrible for us, honestly. Um, we do get the Max Phantasm, thankfully, into the Dragapult. And we're sitting in a nice position now. So. I think really to eke out this, this this last kind of turn of the game against the Terrakian, get rid of that beater. <sighs> Heart was pounding there, and like see beat up. I'm like no, no. But there we get the we get the re redirection, which totally helps there. Um, so we'll, we will just spore into the Terrakian and protect Marowak. And as long as that Terrakian stays asleep for a turn, which it will do, because we'll go we'll get a spore after it. Um, oh, it's got an Earthquake. It's not even going for a Rock Slide. So there's the Earthquake coming out. Mungus should take this pretty comfortably. And um, there's no chance of a flinch there, which this is the one thing I was worried about. You know, Rock Slide coming out, we flinch with the Mungus, forces us to attack with Marowak the next turn, but thankfully... Oh, and we do see a Lumberry. That's not good. <laughs> okay, well, we probably go down to an Earthquake with uh marowak here so it's going to be a very close end to this game and uh, we'll go we'll have to go for a bomb meringue we could have went for a double protect but oh marowak actually survived so marowak shown its bulk here which is amazing we get the bomb meringue off which is incredible and uh, i don't think we're going to need that spore because bomb meringue going to be enough to clean up wow i didn't actually that was a really close one and it just goes to show these new pokemon that are coming into the format even though we had like most things in our favor, we had the speed control that, that game. These Pokemon are crazy strong and they're uh, very difficult to deal with and you need to be very careful around them. So it's a, just a little warner for kind of going into the, the new series starting on the first. Um, just uh, don't underestimate these new Pokemon, especially things like Terrakion. If you haven't played Terrakion, if you're new to Pokemon Sword and Shield, haven't played any of these these uh, Pokemon in the past, in past formats and things like that, they're very strong and good ones to look at as well, especially if you're wanting to build teams around around them. Okay, we've got Janisa. Is it Janisa? I don't know. I kind of, I, and, and the worst of pronouncing uh, usernames, but they've got a nice team. They've got Mar uh, Lola Marowak, we've got the Togekiss, the Porygon 2, we've got more beat up as well with the Whimsicott Terrakion and the Dragapult. The beat up user is obviously going to be the Dragapult and the Whimsicott there. And the problem with bringing Amoongus to this sort of game against the Whimsicott, you cannot uh, redirect the beat up because of its grass type and it will just ignore a redirection there. Um, now, 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 what do we do? We need a Trick Room up for sure. I think we got Ndidi Hat. And then, hmm. We want our own Porygon. Like Porygon's good, but it's not it's not great against a Lola Marowak at all. Um I mean Gigalith is probably a better bet here and Amoongus. Um so we'll give Gigalith a run out in this one. Rather than the Aron Marowak. And we'll see what we can do here with gigs. I think if we can't max our hat, I think we'll go for the, the Gigalith here. It's going to be difficult though. It's kind of the trick room mirror. Uh, we've got different redirectors on both sides of the field. They got Togekiss, we got Amoongus. Hopefully we can come out on top because the spore always comes in very useful. Okay, so we're going to see uh, Whimsicott Trakion. Uh, this isn't good at all because they're going to just beat up, they're going to beat up and they are going to be able to get plus four straight away and we're going to get shown up for the, the trainer that we really are. Um, all we can do, we can try and follow me, but we, we're going to get rock slid. I think the only thing that we can hope for right now is they either max Terrakian or they rock slide and miss. 
um, but there is nothing stopping them going for the beat up and this is like a prime example of leading into a team like this and not being prepared for it so something like um, well the beat up they can't go for it, for it can they because we, we just follow me so that's fine um, actually I don't know what I'm talking about I'm worrying I'm talking like I've got a Moongus on the field if you've got a Moongus over the Ndidi here that's when you're screwed if you've got Ndidi over the Amoongus, you're fine. I don't know what I'm talking about, ignore me. It's very early in the morning. <laughs> I just wanted to get this up today for you guys. So, excuse me. Indeed, he's the uh, ideal Pokemon to stop this beat up. And we're going to be able to get our Trick Room because now the Terrakion maxes, it's going to be fine. We'll get the Rock Fall. It will take um, Indeed down to its... Oh, it doesn't even take us down to a Sash, so we might even get... Uh, it might even stick around for the next turn, which would be ideal. Um, maybe not though, because we're going to see the Trick Room reversing and reversing again, which is not great. Um, hmm. Now, do they go for it again or not? Um, do they go for it again? This is the thing. This is a question. Because we've got a couple of options now. We go for the Follow Me again, right? And we go for the trick room and hope that they don't go for a trick room or we attack and hope that they set the trick room for us now what are we gonna do are they gonna trick room again because that would put us in a terrible spot where we could just expanding force but if we don't do if we don't trick room now I mean we got a movies to come in so it's not the end of the world and we get expanding force off. It's just we kind of need the speed control to beat this track in. Um, but we could max and just go max mind storm into the track in and just remove it from the field and not worry about our trick room. I think it's not a bad idea. Let's do that because I want to take the beat up user out of the frame. So let's max. Let's go for that max mind storm. Um, and the follow me with uh, Ndidi. And if that Whimsicott decides to set the trick room up for us, I think then it's GG. If not, we've still got a Moongus to come in. Um, and then without the Terrakion on the field, I don't worry so much about the beat up um, strategy. So uh, here's the follow me. Is the Whimmy gonna attack or is it gonna? It is gonna attack. We could have went for a Moonblast here. Not so good, not so good. Okay, well, that's fine. We could have went for a Trick Room, but we haven't. We've maxed anyway, so... Steel Spike, are we going to be able to take this? We should be. Yeah, we take that. Okay, it's going to get the Defense Boost. That's fine. All we need is the Mac... This this gene, this move to knock out the Terrakion. That's all we need. I think we had to go for it here as well. Oh, we don't get it. We don't get it. And it's going to get the beat up this next turn. Okay. Um, hmm. Terrakian is so fat. Terrakian is literally so fat. Hmm. And now we can't get a trick room up, which is not ideal. Um, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think, well, we've only got one option. I think we have to, well, do we? I think we could probably go for a spawn into Terrakian and we could definitely max guard. And that would definitely help us out a lot because we can't rage powder the beat up which it's likely going to go for now i think um but it's whether or not terrakian kind of reads through this uh, protect on hat and um attacks into the amoongus so we're going to see a moon blast here okay i think we're going to get the spore off but the thing is i would think the terrakian probably is holding a lumberry it makes sense that it's holding a lum especially for this play like we've already seen terrakian once probably got the lum hasn't got the lum huh that's that's super strange i would have damn did not expect that at all okay we're definitely going to take a moon blast from the um from the, the whimsicott so we'll sludge bomb into that slot and we'll go for a max starfall um where's that g max move Okay, we'll go for a Mindstorm into Terrakion, just in case anything switches in here. Let's 
gone for the beat up now, but the Terrakion is 100% going to stay asleep. There's no way it, it wakes up this turn. It has to spend a turn sleeping here. So Whimsicott really kind of wasting a turn trying to beat up. And I guess maybe thinking uh, if we don't attack the Terrakion, we'll maybe leave it alone. Then we'll get punished for that. But there's no chance. The Terrakion has been such a thorn in our side so far. There's no way I'm not attacking it. Sludge Bomb should take down the Whimsy cut here four times effective so and it's going to be tough to close this one out it'll depend what my opponent has in the back uh, but we do have giglet still this is the last turn of our max with hat um but we may be able to get a trick room up now i think we might be able to i was kind of worried that in that situation we would take a moon blast but we haven't so that's super good So what are we going to see from my opponent? This is going to be the interesting thing. Okay, so we've got Marowak and... Mm, well, if we get the Trick Room up here, Marowak can drag a pull, for sure. If we get the Trick Room up, it's going to be super good for us. So I think it's not a bad idea. Dragapult's got to attack first. It can Dragon Dart, but other than that, it can't really do too much. We can Rage Powder. We're going to have to sack a move this year, unfortunately, because it will go down to whatever the, the Marowak decides to throw at us. But then we can use that Expanding Force the following turn if we want, and that and Rock Slide should be enough to get rid of both Pokemon, to be honest. So we just need our Trick Room set up, and we will be fine. So there's a Rage Powder where we see something like safety goggles, Marowak, safety goggles. Okay, so we're going to see the fly from the Dragapult, which is fine. I don't mind that too much. Poltergeist and Amoongus Voids. Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal. Because now we can either put the Marowak to sleep uh, or we can Rage Powder. And we're probably better off Rage Powdering, honestly. Um, Are we? Are we, though? Um, no, we'll put the Marowak to sleep. We're not better off doing that. We'll go for Expanding Force. Because um, if we lose Hat, we get Gigalith in, so it's fine. And then the next turn, we can just put Dragapult to sleep if they target down uh, Hatterene. With the, the Dragapult, I mean, obviously, we get the Spore into the Amoongus now, so that is sleeping. It's been a bit of an Amoongus show here, really. And I think it's good because it just shows you the example of how like effective Amoongus can be at just shutting down teams where otherwise we had uh, like hardly any opportunity to do, you know. Like we would have just lost this game without Amoongus. Like both games, really. Uh, we'll go for the Expanding Force again, put the Dragapult to sleep, and that should take the Marowak down. And yeah, we, and we might not even need the Gigalith in this situation. And yeah, this just goes to show how strong a move this as a Pokemon is. It's just incredible. And this is why in previous formats, it's always been a top tier Pokemon. It's always been a great utility to have on, on Trick Room teams and even as an anti-Trick Room um, team as well. So uh, obviously expanding force, it doesn't get the spread move when um, it's not on the terrain. So it's only the spread damage when it's in terrain, it gets a boost as well so it's kind of sad that we haven't got our terrain up but i think we're going to be all right nonetheless so it comes down to the dragapult we'll go for i mean we could giga drain we're not going to get much damage either way we'll go for a sludge bomb and a dazzling gleam that might be enough dazzling gleam single target life orb uh it's going to get it isn't it it's going to get the dragapult unless it's like super bulky and even then, it's still all right. We've got gigs in the back to come in and it'll be able to clean this one up. So we'll just wait for my opponent and the battle was cancelled. So that wraps that one up. We got two victories and two victories um, that I wasn't so confident that we would get, uh, especially even in the midst of those games. It felt like they were a little bit kind of far away at points. But I think just showing that the, the kind of the versatility of the team and the Pokemon in there help helps massively. So, as I said at the uh, start of the episode, we're going to give you guys the rental code for this team. Um, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. At least, if nothing, it gives you guys a team to kind of start the series off with tomorrow when it's uh, like it comes into effect. Um, and you can hit the ground running. And that is always the big thing about um, starting a new series, just getting in and practicing, learning the format. Uh, manage teams to share we'll have to get rid of one of our older teams 
Um, what are we gonna do? I think let's get rid of this one. Yeah, let's get rid of. Oh no, Intellion's kind of new. Gorilla Boom, that one. Uh, let's get rid of this Charizard one. Don't make public. Oh, yeah, we'll get rid of this one, and then we will. Come on. Select a team, and we want this expanding force. So I'll make it public. Yes, and I'm gonna have to make myself disappear for a minute, I think. So we'll do that when this pops up so you guys can see the code. But sometimes I I do put myself in the way of these codes. So there you go, my friends. There is the code for this week's team. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Uh, if you do try it out, as always, do let me know what your thoughts are on the team. But it is an incredibly strong team. Very fun to play around with. Got some really nice tricks. Obviously, we got the try attack on Porygon 2 because you don't want uh, what you would normally see is Thunderbolt because of the uh, lightning rod on the Marowak. Um, and the Gigalith is a lot of fun. I would normally have Super Power over Body Press, but I didn't have the Super Power TR, so that is the reason why, but uh, Body Press still works super nicely, especially if you get burned. You've got that kind of to fall back on if you need to, and as a max move, it still works uh, as Super Power would anyway. So, my friends, that is going to wrap up today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you all for the next one. Remember, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel if you're new for this sort of content, competitive play. Um, we do Pokemon update videos, guides, and all that sort of thing. We have a lot of fun while doing it as well. So it would be great to welcome you to the channel family. Um, have a great rest of your day, my friends. Whatever you're up to, make sure you're taking care of yourselves and be kind to each other. And I will see you all for the next one. So until then, take care and bye-bye.